showers and thunderstorms pop up along the central and eastern ranges, possibly extending down into Gippsland. Closer in, we have a dry Wednesday with plenty of sunshine. Good morning. Today it's the 22nd of November. It's the second day of Coms Connect here in Melbourne. Um, yesterday was kind of an interesting day. Uh, we closed the day with the RCA dinner and the room was really packed. So what they introduced yesterday was this book over here. Looks very nice. It's, uh, this, is the, <laughs> this is the front side of, of it. The book describes really in detail how Land Mobile Radio has been established here in Australia. I'm very honored to have received this book as one of the first and uh, it shows the pictures, it shows the history of Land Mobile Radio. So some of the topics described in this book is, for example, why is radio still successful? That is still today, the fact. Technology battle lines, um, digital radio arrives, and it's a, well, I'm sorry about it. It's a very nice book that I will definitely read when I'm leaving Melbourne in about a few days on my trip to New Zealand. Oh yeah, and there is one other thing. Nothing can be done in critical communications in land mobile radio if there are no people really dedicated to the industry. And that is one of the things that came out of the, um, uh, the session last night at the dinner, that people make this industry. And, um, I'm glad that I'm one of them enjoying this industry and enjoying the critical communications market. Ah, just an emotional thing, I just wanted to say that. Coffee is a big thing here in Melbourne. Um, we're at the booth of Motorola Solutions where they serve coffee. Just like Critical Communications Mina back in Dubai, just like all of the other shows. I think that's a good thing. Double espresso, this will keep me going. I'm having a meeting with Chris Patel from Motorola Solutions, uh, but you can't find him. Or at least he... No, he's not there. They just told me they have an updated Kodiak solution available. You might know Chris Patel from this video over here. Uh, I interviewed Chris during IWC. Um, I think it was two years ago. We talked about the Kodiak broadband solution. That was just, you know, uh, the, the guys were just taken over by Motorola Solutions. Now I'm back. Now we talk about an updated solution for Kodiak. And that's interesting, Chris. So let's go to the section where you have your solution okay. available, right? Sure. Okay, cool. You're going to demo the new solution or not? Yes. yes. Okay. We are going to demo you the latest 9 data release for mission critical PTT and some of the features like emergency calling, ambient listening, discrete listening, and also some of the video capabilities uh, that we are planning to do in the future. So we're going to show you uh, right here at this booth. Okay. So as we, we are doing uh, push to talk and the race and all these features, now we're introducing the push video where in the Bosch video, if you go to the command center and if you try to request from this user to push video, you can either demand the video from him, where if you see now, I'm demanding the video from this guy. So I'm giving him no option. Okay, so what, okay, so what you see over there? Is, is what this is recording, right? Yeah, th this is what we are streaming. We're streaming all the way to India, where the server sits in India all now. All the way to India? Yeah, yeah. and then it comes back to the uh, command center. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. We, we talk about, if we talk about critical communications, we talk about delays, right? Yeah. And, and this is, what about what happens with the delay? Where is the delay? We killed the delay. Yeah. We, killed, <laughs> that's, we killed the delay. Yeah. That's interesting, because that is what mission critical communications and data, as well, is all about, right? Yep, this is mission Critical push to talk. So, how did, push so is that the new updated solution of Kodak? So you so you get rid of the delay? Is that yeah, the I mean, we tuned the software. We, we, we've been doing in Motorola push video since, uh, let's say, 2007 now. Yes. And we, we worked in all the codecs and all this stuff and the transmission and how we tuned the channel. And because we, we, we don't know which channel we're using. Right now we're using 4G and we're using Wi-Fi. So okay. based on that Pi, we tune the bandwidth of that video, the pixel, the uh, streams, and then we push it, and then we get the best experience to the user. Well, 
if, if we talk about the best experience, that is definitely what this is all about, right? Because not such a long time ago, we were thinking about how do we get rid of the delay, but even if you're using 4G and Wi-Fi, there's almost no delay. Yeah, it's almost uh, very minimal. So what did you do, what did you guys do technology-wise? Let me let me ask. Or is that a big so secret? There are a couple of. There is definitely a lot of things in the software which we put in the client as well as uh, the servers in the in the back end, uh, like adaptation of the video codecs, the delays, jitters. Also, uh, we are going to be on uh, mission critical uh, carriers like Telstra here in Australia and AT&T FirstNet or uh, EE and ESN. And they're we tuning are, the networks are, pretty are, much, right? Yes, we are going to use the right QCIs and QoS parameters to even make it better. What is the next step? Well, the next step is all about integration with our other apps. So we have uh, apps in digital evidence. Yes. We have uh, our command central dispatcher. We also have uh, products like Aware, which has all the asset management, all the incident management system, and we are connecting all these things together. We uh, also have a um, acquisition of a Vigilant. Yes, of it's course. A camera system, so they have a lot of analytics, video analytics built in. So all this information goes for evidence, also back end processing of analytics. Okay. And so we can even target the users. We can put the software in the camera. Or, or, or in the even the handset where we can put a, uh, some of the targets, all the things. So instead of transmitting all the data, we can capture the relevant data okay. together. If you think um, wireless innovation is. Uh, only a company that is exhibiting their products here, you're totally wrong. There, there is a network, networking bar over yeah, here, right? That's right. And you guys are sponsoring uh, the networking event. We do every year, and the reason for that is we want to support this event. I think it is the greatest event we have in Australia for public safety. If you look around the room, you see the high caliber of people that this event attracts. It's very specific, it's very high level public safety people, not just vendors, but the actual users and the decision makers for that. And that's what makes this event special. So as small as it is, it's a quality event and we need to support that because we need it to thrive in our in our public safety environment and this is what does it. Let's let's toast on that one, I think. Let's toast Comes Connect. Comes right? Connect. It's Cheers. The best event. Thank All you right. very much. I'm running around this show for the last actually seven hours or six hours. Um, and I'm always talking about actually the vendors on this show, but now I find somebody who can explain to me more about what's happening here from his point of view. And this is Craig Stolten. And Craig is from the Queensland Fire and Emergency Services. Exactly. So, Craig, so how do you experience the show? Is, is this worthful for you? Yeah, it's great. It's a great opportunity to see future technologies. So we're always trying to do, in a government sense, uh, more with less. Uh, and the um, vendors here provide us the opportunity to see what they're suggesting the future looks like. And it gives us the opportunity to provide them information around what we see uh, our needs are and where our clients are in the future. Are you excited about the future on communications within your sector? Yeah, we certainly are. It's a, it's a big part of where we're going with uh, um, uh, more data systems rather than the voice. Voice will have a long, a, a long future for us, but we are moving a lot more to a, a data-rich environment. <laughs> solutions so the food needs to be exactly the same just for example take a look at the dessert over here I'm not sure if it is dessert but this does look pretty nice actually if I look at the stuff what's going around here the only thing is to find a table to uh, to put your food down and to enjoy it can I join you guys over here yes please go yeah. through. Stuart Henry is the guy I'm gonna talk to here and there is Nokia, and I see Stuart already standing there, talking to one of his partners. Um, 
There we are. Stuart Henry, Nokia. Right. How do you do? You're good to see good you. Good afternoon good to, to you. See you. I'm, do, I'm not disturbing, right? So no, you're, no, you're we okay? are, we are, we're here working. <laughs> okay, you're working. Yeah, exactly, right. So, I've been around the world for a few locations. Yeah. IWC, yeah. Critical Communications World, yeah. Mission Critical Technologies. All of these shows, Nokia popping up since the last two years. And you guys are here as well. Critical Comms Connect. Correct. So, what about? I think um, for us in uh, Nokia, um, we, we're making some major investments in, in industry and in enterprise. Critical communications is a major part of it. And when you think about it, the mission statement of Nokia is to create technology to connect the world. Now, for many years, if you look at the internet, it was essentially consumer based communication that were driving requirements. Exactly. But in the last few years, the mass digitization of industry, the desire of um, first responders to have a full range of communication capability mm -hmm. means that industry is now demanding the type of solutions Nokia, Nokia can do. So we've responded to that by building a dedicated enterprise organization. So you, built, you set up the organization? Set up the organization to address government, to address public safety, to address uh, various verticals within industry, which is why when you travel the world, you will now see Nokia at many, many of these events. So what about the activities of Nokia in this specific region? So in the region where we're working in significant public safety opportunities in Korea, Japan, Singapore, and many countries in ASEAN. So this region is very much a thought leader. What's really interesting in Australia is I think Australia is about to leapfrog many other countries who have perhaps adopted the public safety. Well, you take a look at the Telstra network, for example, right? That's, for example, that's an example. Yeah, but I think what's interesting here is what we're finding uh, from a government perspective is very, very strong collaboration between the states. And this type of teamwork and partnership occurring in Australia, I think will help facilitate uh, Australia moving much quicker moving forward. So 5G is going to happen, 5G is going to change all of our lives. Motor all have had a great show, some great opportunities, had some great conversations. Positive, and we look forward to being here in 2019. I'd like to think that it has been a success. Really good feedback. Looking forward to the show next year. A fantastic trade show here at Commerce Connect in Melbourne. It's been just wonderful for us. The ability to showcase some of the latest in mission critical technology from Telstra has just been an absolute pleasure. So it's done.